quite well as well. But ladies and gentlemen, we will be going into the draft of the first series of the day. It is Falcon Esports going up against Incendio Supremacy. Falcon on first pick. Oh, oh, oh. Right off the bat, you could see oh, the respect goodness. given <laughs> over by Falcon towards Incendio. Already a ban on that Farsa and the Estes. So not just Rosa, but Apex 47 too. Absolutely. They expect this one trick strategy. You know, if you're so good at it, instead of going uh -huh. against it, I'm gonna go ahead and just ban it, right? How about you show me your second hand? Show me like what you're good at after this. Do you even get a strategy ready? That's attitude coming from Falcon. At the same time, we see Falcon go against Black Blacklist in the group stage where they had a Granger. Right? Are we going to see Granger coming out today, going against Incendio? That's something that I want to see because Granger is a character that's heavily overlooked in the meta, but it definitely has a place, especially going against a heavily grouped composition or playstyle like Incendio. Yeah, I think I've seen this strategy before, right? You use the Eve and then you land a real world manipulation. I think it's also Falcon as well. It's so easy for the Granger to land the ultimate, and especially when it's AOE, that's like a massive nuke sent into the enemy's uh, backline as well. But now let's take a look at the bands. It's gonna be the ban for that carry. A lot of heavy emphasis on Zipix right there, but do we want to really target Zipix's uh, hero pool? Well, before we talk about Zipix, there's still a lot of meta characters on the meta. The, on, the, on the draft, we have Glue, we have Valentina, we have Kaja, Grog. Because of the respect ban in the early phases, so many OP characters are let open right now. I mean, what is Incendio's strategy right here? I mean, are they going to not ban any of those to take more? Or are they trying to ban one and take another one that counters? We'll see what they go for. Honestly, I'm thinking more of the Kaja ban, or they might oh. just go for Fanny, a hero that really gave them a lot of trouble yesterday. Yep. Up against Team Hawk, Gary on the Fanny was able to do what the Keys Victory said Falcon needs to do up against Incendio. And Falcon, Jack though, they're going to pick up that glue. Ooh. First pick, left open, a lot of crazy picks, and there you go. Very well said there, Mirko, because if you notice, the problem about Yubei Strat is that if you do not know how to master um, the ways properly, you may get, you may have a lot of cosmetic plays, map plays, right? That's more visible when there's an enemy link or an enemy fanny. So that's one part of that a problem removed. Expect, you know, Falcon, hopefully, uh, you get to see Ken the man literally fly around the map, uh, pick up these um, cross map plays, and then you know convert that into a turret push. Well, for Incendio right now, usually it's the Farsa first pick. You know, now with the Farsa and the Estes band down, Varmus? they might actually go for Varmus no, can work, but Yeve is a better Yeeve. choice. Again, we know Rosa likes to dictate that mid control, mid yep. meta, and the Eve is already going to be hovered over, and that's yep. another pick yep. coming in. I thought it might be the Grok or the Benedetta that Incendio really liked to go for early on in the draft, but no, they secure the Martis for Tianzi. It's once again, coming down to that mid control that can translate over to invades happening in the enemy jungle. Yep. See, the thing about picking up Eve against Glue, Glue can easily get on a character like Eve, right? Because mm -hmm. if you just use the simple combo, and by the way, yellow flash is really flashy with a skill one flicker combo, right? If he gets onto you, you are kind of dead. If you get the passive instantly procced, all the charges, all you need to proc an ultimate, grab you to his own allies, and it's done. And just when I mentioned Kanja still up, the reason why Farm is can be a threat here. I don't know if you guys have tried the mechanic. Once Glue ultimate, Farm is skill 2 can one-shot Glue or any ally along with it because the bounce. Well, Valentina might just be the pick here, but no, they actually go for the Kadita. Usually, for Justin, we saw this up against a Yeev and a Martis. Ooh. He really likes to steal that decimation, right? The decimate from the Martis. Here, though, they're opting for a bit more aggression. With the Kadita, it Ooh. does mean that they are opting for just more kill pressure in the mid lane instead of trying to level that Yeev in the clear wave clear. Yeah, by the way, uh, looking at the aim coach uh, right now, right, based on the M4 stats, this is like the highest Ooh. hero pool. Wow. In M4 with 28 Sanders. unique heroes, you hey. can expect Incendio like super flexible. They know, you know, they can pull out the right tools for the right time and the right job. Benny. But at the same time, looking at the bands going in, heavily targeting Zipix because Zipix hasn't picked up his hero just yet. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be another target because look at a draft right now. This might be the one of the time where Falcon actually just take out the Granger. I think 
because they're not they're not too much dive. There's a Benedetta, but you do have a Kaja that can straight up counters that, right? Kaja is one of the best peel in the entire game. Granted, you also have a lot of vision control from Kaja, and also Kadita is going to be in the bush camping that Eve. Every time Rosa is going to be using the real world manipulation, you can ex expect a rough wave coming out from Justin to eliminate the threat to the back line. They are, you know, already technically setting up for something of a physical damage carry. Yeah. It's either a gold lane or the jungle for Falcon Esports right now. We've seen the Granger, so it can work there, but Incendio Supremacy, let's take a look at what they're trying to do, right? You mentioned it, Zipix, they're trying to really just nail his heroes down, and the Lunox can be an option there that they go, go for, that bad. they will go for here. So, four respect bands towards Zipix, who has been one of the key factors for Falcon Esports to win in the draft because he's, he's so dynamic in the draft. He can actually go and you know flex a lot of these different heroes. With the Lunox band out, he might have to actually go and opt for the Beatrix, but Sunshine can just pick it up first. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely going to be an Incendio Beatrix right here, right? This Yubei, it's part of part and parcel of the Yubei strat, right? Something, uh, a very heavy hit from the back line that could go from, from the back line and start hitting targets. But taking a look at the bands from the side of Falcon Esports, they they're taking away the Leslie, though, I like the claw in this case because you've got so much burst damage from the Kadita as well. Falcon is dropping towards more like a pick composition to try to pick apart the Yubei strat. Pick, dive, you can call it whatever you want, right? Uh, they can pick, but they can also dive. The dive is the win condition that I'm seeing more of Literally here, right? dive, yeah. right? With the Kadita. With the Kadita, with the glue as well, just wanting to go to that back line. And Incendio now really needs to make a good choice, right? If they go for the gold lane here, picking up a Beatrix, I, I think they should just leave the gold lane towards that last pick so that they can try to actually hold off up against a Claude if it ever comes down to it. And now, there you go. They actually go, go for the, the Roamer first. Ooh. Rafaela making Ooh. her debut at the M4 stage. Truly the Ube, huh? Yeah, I mean, Cindy really likes the type of healer backline support mages, right? This is one of the best kiting mages you can support to have in the backline. Really, really great pick here. Now, that does limit the goal lane option. What are even available? If you pick Claude, when Claude is jumping in with the Blade and Duet, it can be easily kidnapped by Kaja's ultimate. You can be one shot by Kadita. There's just so much counter. So I think right at this point, they really need to think about what is available, or maybe they just want to save the last pick. Maybe think about Irithel for the burst, for the babies of glue. Oh, man. I feel like, you know, the Rafaela being picked up right here is a little bit crazy, right? I expect that should be the last pick. I feel like Incendio should have picked up the Beatrix first so that they got that Ube strat, part and parcel of the Ube strat. Now they have to go for, you know, either the Aerithel or Claude actually might make sense because you could set up this big box. I'm thinking more of a Brody here, you know? Mm. Uh, the reason they didn't go mm. for the Beatrix ban is most probably because of oh, not the Beatrix pick, they didn't go for it because they want to bully the Beatrix in the gold lane. With the Rafaela, you already have a very solid hero to just help you out, and there you go. Oh, Boom bang bada bing. Oh, Wolf's oh, knowledge has oh, rubbed oh, off on me. The dude. Brody! The, the prediction bro. coming from Miracle right there. Very, very good pick here. Brody also really good against a lot of assassins very in the meta. Good. And it also I does a lot dive. of first damage. Again, especially these free stacks, you know, onto someone like Glue. It's just all those babies, you just wipe them out in one shot. So, really nice pick here. Can they stand out? Is Alien gonna play out of this world this game? We shall find out. I think Alien on that Benedetta is meant to create that cross map place to kind of match that link. Remember, the, the biggest weakness of the Ube strat is that you're walking around together. You may you can only walk down one lane. You cannot be at three lanes at once. With the Benedetta, you can rotate from one lane to another very quickly to respond to that link. So I feel like Benedetta being picked up in the first part of the draft is a, a very good foresight coming out from the side of Incendio Supremacy. Volker, on the other hand, they need to play this pick, right? They need to also try to protect Beatrix. I feel like they can. It's because Falcon, they need to make sure that the enemy is super Five dangerous, but we're going to go into game. The All right. In the game, straight off the bat, based on the drafts here, Incendio Supremacy have a lot of anti-CC. They can get out of a lot of the CC, that lockdown pressure that Falcon has. Um, again, Tianzi, on that Martis, you have a real-world inflation that is very hard to cancel Ooh. out now. And on top of that, you also have the Holy Healing giving you a little bit more, 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 more mobility. Eye for an eye for Benedetta, a whole lot of mobility. So just the CC, is it enough from Falcon Esports to really lock down the targets coming in from Incendio Supremacy? I think there's a lot of CCs coming out from Falcon, right? Like um, 
They can match the CCs towards the CCs as well. The real world manipulation, technically, that is an infinite. I would say I may be a bit um, making it a little bit too big, but I feel like that's a 90% slow. It's almost like a stun, right? It's almost like an immobilize. And the one thing I want to mention is regarding Kadida and all those kind of character assassin type of characters, if they don't show up, if you just hit in the bush, that itself is a CC in its own. Because if you don't know where they are, that's a mind control, right? Like you cannot really send your hand. You cannot really like just, oh, show your real world manipulation because you know the Kadita's gonna target you. You know the Ling's gonna target you. Same with Glue. Now, at the same time, Alien have to be worried about Naomi because Naomi is gonna be staying on top of Beatrix to make sure the backline has enough room to do damage. The moment he jumps in with whatever combo you have in your, in your sleeves, that's when Naomi show up with Divine Justice and bring down the kill. So let's take a look at the player comparison right here. The player comparison between Ken from the side of Falcon and Tianzi from the side of Incendio. I think, yes, the stats doesn't really accurately depict the full picture because Tianzi has shown that he could play the Fredrin, whereas Ken is very heavy on the Assassins. You know, a bit more aggression coming in from Ken. Mm -hmm. Number one, First Blood still. He's very, very aggressive early on, but I think we are gonna be jumping back into the game for me to really look at the emblems again, right? Yep. What did they take? Ken, Demon Slayer means that maybe he's not going to be that active on the map. He might just be actually opting to go for farm. This is where it gets really rocky, in my opinion, for the Ling, right? Mm -hmm. Because TNC is gone from the Demon Slayer too. He's going to have a better time in the clear department, and that's where Ling can be really vulnerable to these invades that Incendio can set up for because oh. they have a better wave here in the mid lane. Oh, here we go in the mid lane. TNZ is going to find a little bit of poke into his HP bar, and it's going to be Falcon taking the lethal wonder in the river. I think that's a good fight for the side of Falcon, right? That's some stats that Ken desperately needs. Got to get to level 4 as quickly as possible. I think what Falcon have in their draft is a lot more flexibility, right? We've seen how the power of a Kaja can counter engage. You don't need to force your Kaja to force that engage with a flicker. You can also play a Kaja passively. You catch the engager from the side of Incendio, drag him back and reverse that person down. Well, here you can already see TNZ is going to be able to actually clear out a bit faster. Rotating Yo. already around the gold lane. Whoa! Oh, a little bit of damage onto Zipix, but the goal is pretty clear, and TNZ will take the small camp on the bottom side. Yeah, no biggie for now. I think a lot of focus from the side of Incendio at the bottom side. Naomi is there trying to make sure that the peel. But another thing that we also have to talk about, Mirko, is Incendio does have some form of rush control because with the four, well, way the Rafaela works, right? I think it's the first skill that actually reviews the members inside the brush, even though there's no vision. I like the fact that both teams are playing around their winning lane. Incendio rotating most of their resources over to the roadie lane. That is a bit more of a bully. But Alien. There we go on the top side. Alien jumping and finding a lot of damage. Yellow flash. Yellow flash will be petrified, taking down very low. And pop the split split just to stay alive. But here comes the H. Here comes the jungler. Okay. TNT gets taken very low. It's first blood. Kills his team side of Falcon. It is exactly what we're looking at, right? Ken even using the Temples of Blade to get out of way. I love the play coming off from Falcon. They identify who to target down. That is the jungle down. Down, but it's oh. going to be Incendio, they need to try to reinforce Divine this. Divine Justice into the combo of Justin, and it's going to be another kill to Falcon. They take this fight, and they are making a move to the turtle. Falcon already, again, not only are they winning in these skirmishes, but they're also controlling the neutral objective game. It looked really good for Incendio Supremacy with a lot of HP, but that's when Falcon actually utilizes that to isolate these members, splitting them apart, and putting them in a false sense of security. Yeah, looking at the items right here, ladies and gents, it's going to be the Brody the Sunshine going straight for the BOD. Whereas, if you notice, it's going to be, I believe, a halfway through. I think there's some confusion for the side of Zepex whether I want to go for the BOD first. But I feel like he, he needs more, uh, maybe even a Hunter Strike or even Layer Hephaestus as well to, be to benefit from the render shots. It's very, very tough now for Incendio Supremacy. 1,000 gold lead with the composition Ooh. around the gold lane. I think the main problem for Incendio Supremacy is they were playing towards their weak side of the map. Alien, sure, he's been popping off. He's been making a lot of good plays, but against the glue, there's not really much kill pressure you can put on him. It's Absolutely. actually gonna be Alien who wins out in that lane. That's why Falcon's been playing around the XP lane. Incendio should utilize the Brody lane where he can actually bully the Beatrix and try to look for the trace that we saw in the Keys to Victory. Cross map. And looking for a little bit of poke. Yellow Flash already finding his way into the fight. And Aliens looking to fight back to keep the jungler healthy. But it's 40 seconds until the turtle. 
It's 40 seconds under two, the turtle. There's no reason why these two teams should fight there. Another benefit from the side of Alien is that, yep, yeah, with the uh, the emblem currently, so that he could just regain and heal, so that he could sustain that fight even longer against and glue. Another benefit about the Benedetta is that I could rota I can clear the wave quickly and then rotate even faster. And there's also that potential. Bottom for side. Us Here comes Divine Judgment, and the hook is real. Damage ready. Is the Sunshine taking low? The rough wave finding the damage and funding the kill. And Justin will take the Marksman down Ooh. and funding a double kill to the side of Falcon. I feel like Incendio may have made this mistake, giving Justin that comfort pick of a Kadita, especially when going for an Eve and Uwe Strat Mirko. It comes down to timing now, right? Early on, Incendio played for the wrong side of the map. They were punished, and Falcon got that gold lead to start rolling, and they were able to actually utilize that to win in Maybe the gold it. lane too. And even here, Ken goes in. Oh, Ken goes in, finding a lot of damage to Alien, but he's very, very mobile, though. Can he get away from the fast hand Ken? Ken is taking a lot of damage, but it's not gonna be enough to barely take him low as Ken will take down Alien on the top side and now making a move up to the top tier one tower. It's very hard now. Naomi's gonna be caught though. Naomi is getting caught and the decimation comes in as now Incendio looking to fight back. This is a Whoa. single kill, make it double. TNZ is shredding the HP of the entire Falcon. And now Glue finding his entrance to the team fight, but not able to find much. Will have to retreat for now, taking a lot of damage. Now, do you mind you, this guy is very, very tanky though. He's getting beat enough, but it seems like he's okay. He's gonna be okay enough. Not so fast as Incendio. One more comeback, and Incendio is fighting back. It's not really fast. I love the fact that Incendio is like, you know what? I know I'm behind in gold. I lost two turtles, but I'm gonna make this coin tosses. I want to try to fight, and then hopefully, if Falcon makes a mistake, I will punish them. I love the fact that they are not afraid to go for these skirmishes, exactly. even though they've been losing in these team fights and in the pickoff game. You can see that the 2000, 2000 gold lead by Falcon now is only down to 1000 gold lead. And in terms of this matchup and the item builds, for the Ling, Ken actually has gotten a few of those good items in here, man. You can already see it with the Wind Talker and on the way to the Berserker's Fury. He's gonna be able to hit that power spike a bit faster than Tianzi. And even when it comes down to the Beatrix Brody matchup, Brody not really getting much done in the gold lane. It's Beatrix who has more gold to play with, and she, if she scales up faster and is able to actually force Sunshine to fall off earlier on. It's gonna be very bad for the Brody. Gee, this is actually really interesting, right? Naomi, the top one in total MVPs, win and lose in total throughout M4 series, eight MVP. I mean, Naomi will be Ooh. feeling very good about himself. No, he doesn't have to feel good about himself. We all feel good about Naomi. This guy has made a god of himself. Speaking of that, this is Falcon now starting the turtle. Oh, here comes the alien, makes his entrance to the team fight. Uh -oh. Divine Judgment immediately issued on the alien, who is able to get away, but he is a fun Ooh. entrance to the back line. Buff wave being issued just to get himself away. Ken is looking for the damage to TNZ, who's getting away. The heal is absolutely insane. Yellow Flash onto the back line, onto Apex 47. He's a little bit too tanky for the damage off the glue, but now Falcon. And it's retreating back to the turtle as they want objective over more skirmish. Incendio, I think they have to be a bit careful. I definitely feel like Falcon should take this turtle right here. And that's where you see the Rafaela start to pop up, try to show up. Just in case if TNC overheats a little bit, you have the bonus movement speed and here to run back. The way Falcon are playing, right, they actually are winning out in these prolonged trades that should be in favor of Incendio Supremacy based on how much damage output they have. But mm -hmm. guess what? That's Brody. That's a burst marksman. You're not. Ma you're mainly looking for burst, not DPS. So Zipix can actually be the one to win out in these sustainable battles, um, dealing out more damage in a long time instead of Sunshine, who just wants to go for that crazy burst. And with the items here, you can already see that's going to be very, very tough for the Brody to compete in the damage department against the Beatrix, who's already building towards the Hunter Strike Ling as well. Remember, he went for Wind Talker, Berserker's Fury, so there's more DPS than burst. And you gotta be worried about Incendio, because this game skills later into the game. Falcon, they have a hyper carry lane, they have a hyper carry Beatrix. This is only getting scarier as the hyper carry really gets her item, really get a power spike. One Divine Judgment might just decide the entire oh. game. As speaking of in the middle lane, might look a little suspicious here. Naomi coming in the flicker. Oh, and the TNZ will be targeted, oh. beaten up, taken down. And it is a buff way to the back line. Killing spree goes up 10. And the Falcon secure the entirety of the fight. They take it. They secure the entirety of the fight. Alien left a little bit awkward at the bottom side. It's a four 
be it's a 5v4 in the mid lane. The best part is you see how Naomi timed the ultimate, making sure that TNZ uses the CC immunity first and then strikes back. It's like it came off a dream, dude. Oh yeah, my man. god. As a Kadita player, there's nothing you want more in the world than to get a three-man knockup, bursting them down Sheesh. and setting up for your team. Falcon have been utilizing their weapons so well here, rotating, being active across the oh. map, and Justin again. One oh more time, Justin, finding the Wombo combo on Alien, who beautifully just skill to the dodge, now Justin in trouble. The real world manipulation will find him dead in the black and white screen. Incendio fights back, but yet, this is still an uphill battle for Incendio as now Falcon looking at a really comfortable spot. Speaking of that, Naomi might have himself between a rough nope. rock and hard plays here, taking a lot of damage, and he will be absolutely uh -oh. obliterated. A beautiful combo from Incendio. They fight back, and they're now making the move to the Lord. Respect is the name of the game. Falcon, initially 2k gold lead, down to 1,000. Why? Because they got too comfortable. They started disrespecting Incendio a bit too much, overextending into the enemy territory. And now you're seeing a little bit of the same. Falcon needs to understand that their lead right now and their heroes will actually fall off later on, right? Incendio will have a lot of resources to actually negate a lot of the CC coming in. So Falcon oh. needs to stay disciplined, needs to just go, and they are exactly doing that, committing onto the Lord. Committing onto Lord, Ken will definitely take that away. I think there's another factor from the side that's working very well for Incendio is TNZ is actually starting to snowball. If you notice that previous catch from the side of Justin on top of Alien earlier just now, using that sec timing that second skill to that T is simply beautiful, Merkel. It is very, very beautiful. Ooh. And now we're gonna take a look at the items again. Ken has actually completed Endless Battle 2. So at this point, Jeez. we said it earlier on, the amount of damage he was doing in these team fights is more DPS. Now with the Endless Battle, the Berserker's Fury working on... Whoa, he's actually going for a BOD here. Not yeah. penetration, no Melfic Roar, no DHS. He wants to deal more damage on towards the back line. And as you can see, from there we go. Goza, there's no physical defense just yet. He's going to be melted down if... Zipix and Ken can go for it. Or Justin. Speaking of that, here comes Divine Judgment and getting Apex 47 onto the back line. He's able to use the flicker himself the way to safety though, but not so fast for Alien, who will be taken out of this planet, taking out of the land of Dawn, as now Falcon knocking the front door of the side of Incendio. They have one more wave come towards the middle. Here it comes, Yellow Flash, putting those snake damage into the front line, trying to zone everybody away, but beautiful real world manipulation will make sure the entire Falcon backs away from the high ground towers. That was a very beautiful defense coming off of Incendio. Not only just the fact that they identified the minions, it's the main problem. Even though they're down on one member, props to Incendio for doing such a wonderful defense. They've snowballed so much, Falcon Esports. Incendio Supremacy, again, yes, it was a good defense, but looking at the composition again, the only person who can really take it to the later stage of the game is that Yeve. Woo! Uh oh, Justin. Justin. Okay. Might be spotted here, and sure enough, Rosa with a skill one beautifully spotted. Justin needs with that bush, and this is a hyper awareness. We're talking about Spider Man level six sense right here. Spotting someone into the bush, and that saved Rosa from potential death. Item check again. Beatrix Zipix already completing that Melfic Roar, oh. heading on to either Wind of Nature or a DHS at this point. But honestly, from the amount of damage Incendio have been putting up in these team fights, I would much rather see a DHS for the Beatrix. Just deal more damage out. The best offense for me is, well, the best defense for me is offense. So I think he might just be going for that. But on the other side, the glue, man, he is so tanky. He, there's no way, there's actually no way for any of the Incendio members to burst him down at this point, right? Mm -hmm. He has so much physical defense with the Anticurus and the Brute Force Breastplate, a lot of movement speed, and he also has Radiant Armor, so the Eve's not really going to be able to shred him down. Yeah. Yeah, and not only just that, right? Take a look at the Lord Advantage, right? It's Ooh. a lot of turrets being taken down. If you notice, it's like one quarter HP of each turret split all the way out. We're going to a sort of allow. You mentioned, Mirko, Falcon needs to show some respect over to Incendio. Even though they've got this 8.5k gold lead, they're doing it at right now. The Lord will be spawned. That's probably one of the highest Lord Advantage that you can get in time for, right? Close to 4,000 gold gained by the singular Lord. And that was an entry level Lord. And here it comes. The Enhanced Lord after 12 minutes, and it seems like Falcon is getting a completely uncontested. This is Incendio holding on to dear life, just protecting the base and holding the drag until everybody hits their power spike. But can they do that though in this game? 
It's just the fundamentals, right? The reason Falcon was able to take that Lord for free is the wave control that they're actually putting down. Slow pushing the mid lane and even that bottom lane, forcing Incendio to actually step out of the base but a, a little bit. And they're not going to do that. It's not safe at all. If he does step out of that base, there's so many pick potential coming in from Falcon and they're oh. already zoning yeah, right now. Yellow flash, already flashing into the enemy base. Don't everybody away from the high ground tower. The first high ground tower will fall. Ken will style onto the top. High Ground Tower, as this tower will be shredded to pieces, almost taken down, but sta still standing still, holding up their life, and that is bottom lane, Lord charging onto the base, as there were no towers standing after this one last swing. The entire side of the base for Incendio is shattered around. Lean comes in, finding the damage. Devon Justin will find kill number one. Lean is going in. This guy's unstoppable. Falcon, Justin. they're looking to find the entire base. A beautiful dive, a beautiful rough way. We'll find a kill of Sunshine in the back line. And now there's nothing Alien can do as Land of Dawn has been claimed by Falcon. Ladies and gentlemen, as Beatrice hit the base, Falcon will take game one. GG well played over the side of Falcon. They know the Blacklist strategy. They know the Ube strategy. They, they know the Turkish Delight strategy. They committed that to the memory and they've managed to break that code. 14,000 gold lead at the end of it all. And this is just the Burmese playstyle we were talking about, prioritizing kills and then seeing what's on the board. They've been getting kills. They've been able to force a lot of these fights. And guess what? Incendio, they were, they were just not ready for that. <laughs> Incendio didn't play to the way they actually did in their victories. How Incendio usually likes to play the games and how they actually take the games into their own hands is by not going for that crazy team fight, not actually facing off against Falcon that way. They want to go for trades across the board, cross map and mirroring mm -hmm. the movements from the side of Falcon. So much damage, so much pick potential, you're not allowed to stay in lane and stay isolated. Another thing that also I have to point out for the side of Incendio Supremacy is the fact that, you know, they there, it's not an Estes anymore. You're bringing a Rafaela, but I'm gonna leave it that to the analysts to break it down for us. But we gotta talk to you about the M4 Battle Night. Boom, boom, pow. Goes live this January 21st. Expect loads of events and rewards up for grabs in game. First of all, what you can do is complete the battle tasks in the game on January 21st to get a skin choice chest. Yes, I love the Leslie skin very much. I need to buy that. You can choose the skin you like for most of this chest, so I can definitely get that Leslie skin. Aside from that, Battle Bonus awaits you on the same day as well. Play matches and you'll get a Team Star Protection for three matches. Double Star Raising Points, Double Protection Points. What? Double AXP and Double BP for five matches. And we're not stopping there. Sheesh. I need to breathe. Free access to all heroes and loads of epic skins will also be available on that day. So save that date, log into the game on January 21st, enjoy the match and win lots of rewards. And let's all celebrate the M4 Championship together, including with your friends. And I need to breathe. You know what? You know, there's so things. many free stuff. Yeah. So much free stuff. Casting M4 exciting, but getting those free stuff is more exciting. I'm going to log into the game on that day. Well. Yep, and with that said, we're going to throw it back to our analyst. It is up to you, Gideon Arashi and Wolf. Take it away. Break down that game for us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the analyst segment. And wow, what a game, what a performance. And I think our expectations were kind of blown out of the water. Yeah, I, think, I think it was a very good draft coming out from Insane Supremacy, but there was something that Falcon did in this game from the draft as well as their playstyle to kind of prove to counter the Ube strategy. And this will be kind of quite a, a long discourse for sure, but I have uh, maybe to, to just to cut it short. What I noticed, the, the main boon or the main problem of um, Uber strategy is that if they don't get to group up together, if their tempo is broken, they cannot find their openings. And that's what happened here. Falcon with Justin and Ken, they destroyed the tempo of Incendio Supremacy. I think we have to give a lot of credit over to specifically Justin here because I think his spatial and situational awareness is at an all-time high. He understands the breaking points of his team and bridges that gap to hold them in an awkward chokehold and let the Burmese Python do his work. Speaking now about the item builds here, we were talking a lot about Ken actually behind the stage and we talked about his power spike. So if you look at his items, it's just a really, really early considering it's only a 15-minute game. 
It could have been, honestly, it could have been faster to a certain degree, but you have to admit that Incendio had a good idea of what a defense they wanted to put up. And unfortunately for their composition, it really revolves around whether or not you can actually get a good yeah. combination of ultimate abilities, like Alien with the Electro Final Blow and the Petrify, you have a lock, you have many different ways of lockdown, but the most important one is the Holy Baptism coming yeah. in from Apex. So mm. Falcon immediately recognized that that was the biggest issue if they got flickered on, if multiple people got hit by the Holy Baptism, it makes Rosa's job so much easier. Yeah. So let's shut it down and yeah. making sure that they are careful, make sure that Naomi and Justin are in two yeah. separate parts in two different angles. What I noticed here as well is that Ken opted to go for the jungle emblem. So this is the Demon Slayer, which kind of um, speeds up the jungling pattern of Ken. That is why they were able to disrupt the tempo of uh, Intelligent Supremacy. Get items faster means that you can fight much faster and that's what they did against the Turkish squad. I mean, early on, we talked about how Incendio, they're going to rely on that big AoE combo team fight. What do you think was the main issue, Wolf? Like, it yeah. really wasn't working out. We saw them use the ultimates, and yet Falcon was still able to survive. Yeah, it, it's a combination of both, like, Falcon disrupting them, right? We already talked about that. Another thing is that I think that Incendio Supremacy cannot play as uh, comfortable as they would compared to the previous games because they played for the EVE. And Rosa is known for a very aggressive play, uh, player. Uh, when he plays the Farsa, as an Eve, you're not really that aggressive. I mean, you can think about being aggressive as the Eve, but you have to reserve your ultimate. You have to make sure that it hits a lot of people. You have to make sure that you're in the right spot because Farsa, as compared to an Eve, is much more faster or much more aggressive. Well, I mean, they were going to try and go a bit more aggressive, but. I think that Falcon as well, it seems like they had a lot of things going well for them, especially because of the Absolutely. lack of DPS coming from Incendio. Do you think it's intentional, Gideon? Well, I think the... Well, once they got control over the tempo, they wanted to push it away from Zipex. They were making sure that Zipex would actually have a relatively good time. Like, Brody was not able to bully him as hard as he wants to, and a lot of that jungle pressure forced Brody to mitigate the trades and pull back. But let's have a look at the MVP. MVP for that first game is going to be Justin on that Kadita. 5 2 and 5 with a 71% kill participation. He was the main man making all the plays happen. And of yeah. course, the whole team, they're just used to playing flashy. But I think Justin was the X Factor, the dynamic playmaker. Yeah. I wonder if we get to see the heat map, right? Because what I noticed from that game is that he stayed in that part of the map in the gold lane and on the right side, along the bush of the crab as well as the lizard. You know what I'm talking about, that yep, L bush brush. that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. He stayed there, he made it his home. It made it so difficult for the side of Incendio Supremacy to defend their gold laner in the mid stages of the game. I mean, that's where we, you literally, the elbow you're talking <laughs> about, the tri brush, I like to call it, down yeah. by that bottom side, a really pivotal part of the map because it controls yep. three different pathways down right. to get into the gold lane. And this is only between zero to five minutes. The <laughs> fact that Justin was able to have help from his support to get that mid lane control and then press his influence into the side lanes right. for counter engages always helps out your jungler, especially if he like can, gets out for free. Well, speaking of the jungler here, let's look at some of the highlights from this game. And all the way in the early game, it does seem like Justin was the man trying to make it all happen. And of course, it was messy because both teams, they're going to try and scramble like this. But it really seems like Incendio, when they can't group up, like you mentioned, uh, like you mentioned Wolf, it's just so difficult for them to curb this aggression. Now you can see already through the highlights, the aggression coming out from Falcon in the first few ones, and then there was an attempt from Incendio's supremacy, but they weren't able to group up together. Eventually, they get dove upon. Look at this. It's really easy for Falcon to burst the opponent, uh, their opponents, and Justin, like, hit, what, three members? Three they members. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, they're not only, like, disrupting the tempo of Incendio's supremacy, they're also, like, finding... Um, skill shots that they should not be hitting. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, Falcon, once they have that control, they understand some of the habits that Nintendo Gaming, but well, Nintendo Supremacy just have, and every single time we see that sort of gameplay, it's punished really, really heavily. And I think right now, Justin and Naomi, both of them are communicating